What does it take to be in the top 1%? In a world where obesity rates are rising and the fitness industry is booming, how can you ensure that you are on the right path to join the top 1%? In this video, we will explore the four essential principles that can help you build a top 1% physique and stand out from the crowd. Stick around to the end, where I'll share with you the bonus tip which helped me to achieve that top 1% physique naturally. I'm Lewis. I've been a personal trainer for nearly 10 years, working with over 1,000 plus clients. For my online coaching, I ensure CEOs and entrepreneurs grow their business by optimizing health and performance without the time sacrifices, restrictive diet, or missing out on precious family time. On YouTube, I help you understand the key fundamentals to do it yourself. When trying to build a top 1% physique, some of the most common mistakes people make include these following things. So one, a lack of plan. Building muscle requires a carefully thought out approach and a structured workout plan to ensure all muscle groups receive the necessary attention. Number two, improper nutrition. Not eating enough or not addressing the nutritional needs can hinder progress in achieving the physique you want to achieve. And number three, training too hard or not allowing enough time to recover can lead to injury or burnout. Number four, lack of variety in workouts, but not too often, that's really important. Doing the same workout for an extended period of time can then lead to stalled gains due to the lack of stimulus for muscle adaption, although you do not want to change your workouts too often. Number five, not using proper form. Improper form not only increases the risk of injury, but also hinders muscle engagement and growth. And number six, ignoring hydration and sleep. Not drinking enough water and not getting adequate sleep can negatively impact muscle building and overall progress. All right, so I'm now 11 years deep into training and looking to have that top 1% physique. Although for my first six years or so, I was struggling. So I was all in, switching up workouts like a Netflix binge, copying moves from social media influencers, back on YouTube and Facebook back in the day, thinking six or seven days a week would get me to that top 1% physique. But, surprise, the mirror wasn't really showing what I had in mind. So changing workouts every week and trying the new exercises I found on Facebook wasn't actually leading to much progress. But what was the real deal? So consistency was what really helped. Slow and steady wins the race, as they always say. So consistency wasn't really the fancy term. It was the daily grind showing up when I'd rather be Netflix and chilling, as they say. And it turns out, as they always say, the magic is in the mundane. And then there's precision, not about counting reps like a robot, but feeling each rep and making sure that form is well executed. Ensuring that each exercise has a specific goal and structure towards it. Recovery became imperative, not a sign of weakness, but a bit more of a power move, making sure that I'm recovering properly and I'm not feeling too sore before hitting the next workout. And then there was nutrition. Forget complicated diet plans. I tracked everything I ate without it being too restrictive or time consuming, because that's, let's be honest, is where people struggle. So lastly, it was adaptability, sleep. So I was listening to my body and making sure that I was covering properly and doing everything consistently over the last 11 years. I do believe that after 11 years, I've come a decent way to achieving a physique I'm moderately happy with. Although truthfully, we never completely arrive at that destination. We're always wanting to better ourselves, especially if you're someone who trains to look better. All right, so let's delve into the principles. Number one is genetics and your physique. I had a mate, a fitness enthusiast, who often felt discouraged because he believed he didn't have the right genetics to build an impressive physique. However, his perspective changed when he came across the story of one of his uni friends. His uni friend was an athlete who transformed his physique through consistent training and proper nutrition, despite not having ideal genetics. And mate was pretty inspired by the story and he realized that while his genetics do play a role, focusing on factors within his control, such as the training, nutrition and consistency, could help him make most of his genetic potential. So many people believe that genetics play a significant role in achieving a top 1% physique, leading to a sense of discouragement and a little bit of resignation. This belief can lead to a defeatist attitude and lack of motivation to work towards any real fitness goals. And don't get me wrong, while genetics do play a very key role, focus on factors within your control, such as training, nutrition, and consistency. That can help you make the most of your genetic potential. Although that being said, you can put all the work in the gym and the kitchen as you like, but it's highly unlikely you will look like Chris Bumstead. 
Genetics play a huge role, let's be honest. So you just have to work with what you have at the end of the day. Number two, the power of quality workouts. A couple of years ago, I had someone get in touch with me about coaching. He was a dedicated gym goer, used to believe that working out as much as possible and as often as possible was the key to building that top 1% physique. However, despite his efforts, he struggled to see significant progress. And then I explained a story of one of my other clients who had transformed his physique by embracing quality workouts were tailored to his goals and focused on progressive overload and the main compound movements. So he realized that the key to building a top 1% physique was not just about the quantity of workouts, but the quality and strategic nature of each workout. So engaging in ineffective or random workouts can lead to a suboptimal results and a little bit of frustration. Without a strategic and quality workout plan, you may struggle to make progress and fail to achieve your desired physique. All right, that being said, you need to embrace quality workouts that are tailored to your goals and incorporate progressive overload and focus on compound movements, aka squats, bench and deadlift, to maximize muscle engagement and growth. Obviously, sprinkle in all the other machines and accessory work as well. Next one, prioritizing recovery and stress management. Let me tell you a story about David, a fitness enthusiast, he used to overlook the importance of recovery and stress management in his fitness journey. He believed that the more he trained, the better his results would be. However, he experienced burnouts and fatigue, which hindered his progress. One day, he met Lisa, a yoga instructor, who shared her story how prioritizing recovery and stress managing had transformed her fitness journey. So by incorporating quality sleep, active recovery and stress management techniques, such as meditation and yoga, she had improved her performance and overall well-being. So because of Lisa's story, David realized the importance of prioritizing recovery and stress management to support his fitness goals. Neglecting recovery and stress management can lead to burnout, as we all know, fatigue and hindered progress. Without adequate recovery and stress management, the body may struggle to adapt to training and experience decreased performance. So we need to prioritize quality of sleep, incorporate active recovery and practice stress management techniques such as meditation or yoga to support overall recovery and well-being. Personally, I don't do yoga. I don't do that much meditation, but maybe it will work for you. With all my clients, I make sure that we track their sleep using a fitness tracker as well as taking enough rest days to ensure they're not feeling too run down. Nutrition's role in body composition. Misunderstanding the role of nutrition in body composition can lead to inconsistent or ineffective dietary habits. Without proper nutrition, you may struggle to gain muscle or lose fat effectively, hindering your progress towards that top 1% physique. Understand the importance of eating in a calorie surplus to gain muscle and calorie deficit to lose fat, while prioritizing nutrient-dense foods to support overall health and body composition goals. And I did say at the start of the video I'd give you an extra tip. In my opinion, that should be to get a coach. Maybe I'm slightly biased, but you don't have to stay with them for a long period of time, but even if it's just for a couple of months to make sure you're doing everything efficiently and optimally. I've coached, as I said at the start of the video, thousands of clients for the past nine to 10 years. Still make sure I follow someone else's program to take the time and effort away from myself. So I don't need to plan it and I can outsource that to someone else. So this is why I follow my CEO Health and Performance Blueprint 5-step system with my clients, which combines all five key areas. Head to the link in the description to watch the short video of exactly how I use this with my clients to get amazing results. Or alternatively, you can take the CEO Health and Performance Assessment Scorecard, completely free, which will assess your current performance, give you some key tips on where and how to improve.